You know, we go through life and we hit a lot of tough times and we think we just can't go on. But we can, even at the hardest of times. I didn't have a walk with Jesus growing up, went into a coma, lost my identity, lost my physical sight. But healing hands from a group of kids powered me back to where God wanted me. Be careful of your quote unquote friends because some of them really do mean harm for you. Went through stomach cancer and I found a husband, not the right husband. We all have a fork in the road. You get to choose your direction. You have free will. I chose the wrong path for really over 25 years. I was doing my will, not God's will. That leads to more problems. So I started a relationship with God after those healing hands were placed on me, praying me back, praying me, praying me toward God's will. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I just started listening to the Bible. I didn't get a lot of it. it kind of sounded like listening to Chinese to an English speaker, but I kept listening. And slowly but surely, I started to understand. Relationship with family, incredibly important. Your friends, your godly friends, helping you and drawing you closer. So we moved back to Tennessee to help his parents, my husband's parents. Yep, this is a different husband, a more godly husband. And I was left on the mountain all by myself. That's where we lived. This is a beautiful lookout mountain. Our home, breathtaking and beautiful. On July 17th, 2012, an incredible double rainbow just startled me. The light just beamed through the windows of God's promise. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I was about to completely understand what God meant with this. So on August 13th, a fire hit. A vast and devastating fire. Fear hit big time as I stared at the flames in smoke. In front of me, I employed every type of prayer I had ever learned about in my life, screaming scriptures, and in every possible way I possibly could, demanding that God stop this fire. And it was like a tap was on my shoulder that said, look behind you and behind me was a wall of flames coming toward me very fast i screamed more prayers yelling for god to do something finally i stopped and asked what do you want me to do god and he spoke and he still quiet voice. I want you to put your shoes on and go out and fight the fire. With trembling legs, I forced my legs forward toward the tractor, scared out of my wit more than I had ever been in my life. I was shaking. The air was caustic to my lungs. But when I placed my foot on that tractor, all fear left me because I discovered God will not do for me what I can do for myself. I had to get myself to that tractor and then God took over and for five and a half hours I drove over fire and flame because it was only a yard from my buildings. There was no driving in between. I put my blade down 
and I drove over that fire. The captain finally reached me at the, fi at the fifth and a half hour mark. Tells me in an hour I will get help. And I, as I watched the flames all night, as the firefighters finally reached me and just stood post outside my door, hugging my animals to me, them refusing to leave the house out of their fear. Well, it took over three months to put this fire out. I could not remember what fresh air smelled like, and I was black with ash every day. It took days before I could actually get a shower because all power and water was cut off and burned. People could only watch our mountain from a distance. They could only see the flames, us, the mountain, buried in flames. As Zechariah 2.5 says, And I will be to her a wall of fire all around, declares the Lord, and I will be the glory in her midst. Well, God protected me in the midst. 2.5 miles of road that were to get to me were completely blocked by downed trees and telephone poles. But my faithful tractor and I put under flames for the next two months as the air slowly but surely started to clear and only rock and dust and ash outside my door as far as the eye could see. But within that, there was a glimmer of hope, a little mom and her baby going through the burned forest looking for green. I opened up my tiny little patch of garden of green so the animals could eat anything they needed, brought in more hay and grain for any animal that had survived. But in the end, no matter the test and trials, just know God loves you.